Hmm. Now today's video is a little bit different. It's something that I haven't ever really covered before. That is books. I have I've read a lot of books before I moved to China, but I have never really talked about what books kind of informed my China knowledge before I moved here and what books am I reading now and what things do I kind of agree with and do I disagree with? What are the main features of the books that I'm going to talk about? And, um, you know, should we read these? So here are six books that I read before I came to China. And I've also got some bonus books for, uh, for you guys that I'm reading right now and ones that have been published or sent to me since moving here. So let's get started. So the first book that I want to talk about is one that I actually read for a class at university. It was for my, I believe it was for my modern China class because I studied history and specifically I, I kind of went for more of a China focus. I did a lot of British studies and I did a lot of uh, Chinese studies. Um, so, and this is one of the books that I, that I read while I was at, at university. So it is... Um, the Search for Modern China by Jonathan Spence. And this is just all around a fantastic reference book because it's so well sourced. There are so many um, different types of uh, things added to the book besides text. There are lots and lots of uh, illustrations. There are lots and lots of uh, charts and tables. Like there are so many citations. It's indexed and it takes you through like from the um, from sort of the end of the Ming Dynasty, um, kind of as the Ming Dynasty starts to decay, and then it shows the transition uh, into the Qing Dynasty, and then it talks a little bit. Um, a, you know, like I said, there's there, there are so many different features about this book that make it really good. Um, so if we look at the table of contents, for example, you know we have uh, it, it chronicles it from the late uh, Ming, and then it goes through a couple of the key emperors at the time, and then it talks about how things start to fragment, it talks about different rebellions and things like this, and then uh, it starts to get into how uh, the population changes and about how China starts to connect with the rest of the world and open up, and it's got so many different like tables um, in terms of like, yeah, it's got population tables, expenditures, um, you know, import and export data, uh, cost of living indexes, and it's got all these different illustrations um, that are talked about in the book, that are talked about in the book. And what I actually really like about it, one thing that I like is that it actually uses pinyin, because when you read a lot of these books about Chinese history, they use the Wei Giles system, which just I think is the worst system for for talking about the names of things in China and just for Chinese, it's the worst system. Uh, Pinyin is a much better thing, so it's it's got a little conversion chart that I've actually used um, many many times um, while studying, kind of in reading through old old books about China. Great, uh, it's this is a great book. Um, because it, it, it cites everything that it's talking about. It gives suggestions for further reading. Um, it's actually got terms for things that you may not be familiar with. It's got a full-on glossary, and it's indexed, and it's got so many different notes. Um, like This is a great book that I think everyone should sort of have on their shelves when it comes to Chinese history. So, yeah, definitely check out... The, uh, the search for modern China. This is, this is one of the good ones. This is one of the good ones. I absolutely recommend it. Second book. Uh, book number two on this list is called Chinese Lessons by John Pomfret. And this is the book that really inspired me to come to China. And I just study China and talk about China, but actually to come to China this book was the one. It was, it, was, it was really the one that inspired me because seeing this guy, this guy John Pomfret, he, went, he, he came to China to study during the early 1980s right after China opened up 
to the world. Uh, he was one of the very first international students in China after it opened. So he really saw a, a China unlike so many other people who've come since. He, he was experiencing China in a completely different time, uh, politically, economically, uh, in terms of uh, society itself. It was a whole different sort of China than even you know, people like Peter Hessler, for example, came came to see. It, it was it was just newly opened, and you see, you know, him talking about his classmates. Um, and you know, in the book is really very much about his classmates here, and the struggles that they went through, the hard times that they've gone through, and how some of them worked their way up. Uh, through the system and some of them kind of fell away from the system and some of them uh, really experienced hard times and he and he talks about how he kind of fell in love with China and how he felt like he was adopted by China and how he sort of fell out of love with China and how he sort of has this really complicated relationship with the country and he's very frank with it and very honest with it and I remember reading this this story and just thinking like wow what an what an amazing story to have witnessed the things that he has witnessed and uh, and like the sheer ups and the sheer downs and like what was at stake for him uh, it was um, it was it was crazy to to read this sort of thing um, and yeah when I remember when I read this story I was thinking wow like if I could go to China and have a story like this I would be I would be really lucky. I would be really lucky. This this book is something else. Uh, this is the this is okay. The third book that I want to talk about is also a memoir, but it's something. It's a lot more lighthearted, and it's a lot more kind of every man than John Pomfret's book because John Pomfret's book was very very serious. It was there were a lot of really. Um, sad things going on in that book. It's a very high stakes thing, but but this one that I want to talk about is called Fried Eggs with Chopsticks, <laughs> and you can sort of tell by the name of the book that it's it's going to be a slightly <laughs> more lighthearted thing. And it's about this this lady Polly who um, she just decides that she wants to uh, kind of travel through China and spend a little bit of time in China. And uh, she goes through a few different regions of the area. The one that sticks out most to me was when she was in Guilin and Yangshua and sort of in that area in Guangxi uh, through China. And she just talks about like the sort of the realities of like at that time anyway, the realities of at that time, what it was like to travel through China as someone who didn't really speak Chinese and someone who didn't know what to expect and someone who was just looking to have a good time, right? And she deals with it very uh, honestly. She talks about, um, I think she was like a few a few weeks into her trip or a couple weeks into her trip and she talks about how she's developing this love-hate relationship with traveling around China and just being in China. There are some things that she loves, but then at other times, those things that she loves, she absolutely hates. Uh, there, are, uh, she has little funny things about like fried eggs with chopsticks. She orders these fried eggs, and they come, uh, and they give her a pair of chopsticks to eat with. And she has no idea how to, how do, how do you use chopsticks to eat a fried egg? And then she also gets scrambled eggs at one point. Like, how do I eat scrambled eggs with chopsticks? And she's, she, she's very honest, and it's funny. It's lighthearted. Uh, it's just a, it's an easy read, and there are times when it is very introspective and it is very honest, but it never delves into things that are really super, super deep. So if you're just looking for something fun, uh, this is going to be the one, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, book number three that I read before I came to China, and one that I feel like is one that everyone should read, is called When a Billion Chinese Jump by Jonathan Watts. Now this book is, I love the title for one thing, When a Billion Chinese Jump. And this title has a very specific anecdote that the author goes into uh, at the beginning of the book. And he talks about when he was a kid, he heard from somebody, I think it was a teacher or, or a friend or a parent or something. They said that, you know, if, a, if all 
One billion people in China jumped at the exact same time. It would knock the earth off of its axis and everyone would die. And as a child, I think he said he was like six or seven or something when he, when he heard someone say this. And he was terrified. He's like, oh my God. So we're like, all the Chinese people have to do is jump and then I'm dead. I don't even know these Chinese people. I don't know what they're doing. And he got so freaked out and he started praying that like the people in China wouldn't jump and this and that. And he uses, he uses this little anecdote to talk about how, um, how China is rising up and how China, um, what China does kind of, determines or will kind of determine the course of the world because of the population, because of like the buying power of Chinese consumers, because of the rising economy. And yeah, that's the sort of title of the book, How China Will Save Mankind or Destroy It. And it's a really interesting book in that it goes through China by regions. It goes through China by regions and it talks about uh, the environment in China. Like this book is an environmental book. It is environmentally focused. And it talks about how things have developed in China over the last 10 or 15 years. Now this book's a little bit dated. I think it came out in 2011 or 2010 or something. So as I was kind of going back through the book today, there are some things that are a little bit dated. Um, as are, you know, all these books. China's changing all the time. But it's really interesting in that it goes through things by region and it gives some really sobering facts. It's a really sobering read and it talks about how the stakes are so high with China and it's talking about how uh, things are developing so quickly and it does talk a, a lot about a lot of negative things but it does also talk about a lot of positive things, how China is trying to become more and more green in terms of like solar panels, in terms of um, electric cars, in terms of, um, you know, renewable energy, as well as, you know, fossil fuels and how uh, the way that policy is shaped in different areas of China gives him hope for this region and in other regions, things are not doing so well. It's a very honest look at, uh, at China in that regard, because, yeah, you don't, you don't see a lot of people uh, writing about China um, in a really kind of nuanced way. He does travel like he did. He traveled all throughout China himself documenting all these different things. So these are things that he witnessed uh, firsthand and things are, um, it's very well cited. It's uh, it's very well organized. Um, I, I definitely, I like the book a lot. Um, and it goes through things that like for me are kind of really personal as well, like um, so. There's there's a there's a part where he he talks about Sichuan, talks about the Ziping Pu Reservoir, um, you know, which is a place that I've been to. Although his data on that's a little outdated uh, at the moment. It's it's a and there's a there's a chapter. Uh, it's called like fishing with dynamite or something, where he talks about the Baiji the Baiji River dolphin, which used to live in the Yang, uh, the Yangtze River, and. Um, it talks about the extinction of the Baiji River Dolphin and just the way that he writes, I'm actually getting goosebumps right now, um, uh, the way that he writes about the the destruction of the river by, um, you know, due to uh, dams and things like that. You know, it's this really sad thing, but he also talks about, especially at the end of the book, how there is hope for China and China's doing so many different things that, you know, if done well, will be of great benefit to the world. So it's a really balanced book, I feel like. There are some things that are quite scary in that book, but there are also, like, you know, uh, equally hopeful uh, moments uh, that are kind of inspiring. So, you know, I, I definitely recommend this book. Okay. The next book on the list that I want to talk about is the... Hmm, of Nanking by Iris Chang. This is another really kind of sad book. I just realized like a lot of these books are really sad. I don't mean for them to be. I'll put a couple of other books that are not quite so sad, but I feel like it's a very, very important book. It's a very important book uh, about something that a lot of people 
don't know about or they don't talk about or even if they know about it they don't know the full extent of what happened in in Nanking or as it's now called Nanjing um, during World War two they don't they don't know it and uh, it's I mean, I don't know what else to say. It's it's super sad. It's a really, really sad book. And it just talks about when the Japanese invaded Nanjing in, uh, I think, in 1937, uh, specifically. In 1937, and during its occupation of Nanjing, like, just the, um, the slaughter of the people of that city uh, is just... It's heartbreaking and it's gut wrenching and it's it's really uncomfortable and really difficult to read and it's a monster of a book. Um, it's so thick because there are so many personal stories uh, in that book and it has been cited by people from you know all over the world and uh, in various levels of academia as well as just you know, kind of normal people like me as being a really well-researched and well-thought-out book. And, um, and it's a, um, the humanity of the book is what comes through. The book is about um, the victims just as much as the, um, you know, as the perpetrators of, of the crime. And what, what I really, what I also appreciate about the book is at the, near the end of the book, like the last few sections of the book, um, well, uh, when it's telling the story of, Nan, uh, of the massacre itself, uh, it talks about a few foreigners that played a huge role in saving the lives of, of Chinese people, uh, a Nazi among, <laughs> among others, um, yeah, and talks about how they, you know, how the foreigners in Nanjing uh, sheltered and protected the local people. And I've actually been to the Nanjing uh, Massacre Museum, and uh, it's it's extraordinarily sad. And um, you know, if this is something you don't know about, um, it plays a huge role in the minds of Chinese people today, and in in the Chinese government and their relationship with Japan. Uh, it's something that that shouldn't be forgotten about, and. Um, you know, it's, it's, uh, whew, you know, whenever the issue of Japan comes out, um, you know, comes about, and you hear Chinese people talking about Japan, you have to sort of know where they're coming from, you know, if you agree or disagree on their stance, you have to know where they're coming from, and this book um, is, you know, a huge part of where they're coming from, so, yeah, check that one out, check that one out. This next book was not one that I read before coming to China. It was actually just published, I think, last year. And it got sent to me by this guy, Josh Summers, who actually used to live in China. He had lived in China um, for, I think, like 10 years or something. But he's now in Thailand. Um, uh, he wrote this book called Travel to China, Everything You Need to Know Before You Go. So it's it kind of tells you exactly what... Yeah, what what you need to uh, it tells you exactly what the contents of the book are. So, uh, you want to travel to China? You want to know a few things? Here's what you need to know. And what I like about this book, um, he did send it to me for free. So I just you know I want to just disclose that he did send it to me for free, um, like a year or so ago, and I kept putting off like looking at it uh, until a, a couple of days ago. Now. The last one here is sort of a bonus book uh, because this is actually written by one of my subscribers and one of my patrons, actually. Uh, his name is Vinny, and he wrote a book called Escape from America. And it's sort of a weird title, um, but he, he talks about, you know, he's he's been traveling to China for business and for pleasure on and off for something like 20 years. And he's written a book about um, how his... His mindset has sort of changed over the years um, about the USA and about the relationship between China and the USA. His relationship with Chinese people and how, and the relationship between Chinese people and the USA and Chinese people who have immigrated to the USA and, you know, how that goes. And he goes, he cites so many different little things like, um, 
he cites things like opinion polls and he cites uh, surveys and um, things like that, talking about how people in each country kind of view each other and his experience with, um, uh, you know, culture shock when he first uh, arrived and about him sort of trying to learn the language. And it, it's very, very introspective uh, as the, you know, as the title suggests. Uh, and it's also a monster of a book. It's something like 600 pages or so. It's, it's kind of ridiculous. I think he could have pared it down a little bit. Um, there's a lot of extra stuff in there that doesn't necessarily need to be in there. But, but it's, uh, but there it is, you know, anyway. Uh, it is a bonus book because, yeah, it's written by a subscriber, one of the, one of the China hands. So that's, that's pretty cool to uh you know have a have a sub who who's actually gone and written a book because it's it's something I've thought about doing I've thought about writing a book and I wrote about 50 pages of one um but just didn't didn't end up finishing because like china books are get outdated you know they are outdated you know in a relatively short amount of time because china's always changing and this one you know it may it's written in a way that it won't age quite so quickly as others because it is about this guy's kind of personal opinions and his personal experiences so yeah definitely uh you know you can you can give that uh, a look if you want to but yeah those those are the books that i uh would say now there are lots and lots and lots and lots of other china books out there there's, of course, like Rivertown, which is, you know, Peter Hessler's book. There's Oracle Bones, which is another Peter Hessler one. There's um, Corpse Walker. There's China Road. There's, there are, there's anything by uh, Pearl Buck. There's anything by uh, John Fairbanks. There's, there are so many books out there about China. And if you, if you have your own, your own, you know, recommendations out there, you know, you can put them you know, down in the comments, you know, or in the chat, since the chat's going off right now, there, there are so many, and, um, oh, there you go, so this, this is one right there, so am I taking suggestions? Absolutely, absolutely, so there we go, that is it, thank you all very much for watching, I hope that you'll pick up these books sometime, and um, I'll see you all next time.